Hi guys, so today we'll be looking at um, the question under momentum and uh, shall draw some diagrams as well as some examples so to help us uh, at least understand the concept being used. So the question reads, you have a ball which is uh, traveling to the right at 30 meters per second while it collides with another one which is um, at rest and we're assuming that the collision is perfectly elastic so we need to calculate the velocity of each ball after the collision. So to start with, we have this ball that is moving to the right and this ball is 40 grams. It collides with another ball which is at rest. So it's moving at a velocity of 30 meters per second. This one is at rest and it has a mass of 80 grams. After the collision, um, it's perfectly elastic. So since it's perfectly elastic, what it means is that they move in different directions after they collide. Remember, this one is moving towards this ball, it hits this one, then after the collision, it's perfectly elastic, meaning that they move at uh, different uh, speeds as well as different directions. We're in the same direction, but the speed, of course, will be different. Okay, so now, what we need to know is that um, from the law of conservation of momentum, we know that the initial momentum before impact or before collision is equals to the final momentum after collision. So now we have two objects here, which are just abbreviated. Uh, this is one, we just call this one, we call this two. So, momentum of one plus momentum of two, this is before collision, is equals to momentum of one prime plus momentum of two prime. So the prime is just there to represent um, uh, after collision or the final momentum after collision. Then we know that momentum is mass in motion, meaning that momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. So here we have m1v1, the mass of 1 times the velocity of 1 plus m2v2 is equals to m1, like that, uh, v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. So to make things a bit easier, for the initial velocity, because the difference here is that this one has a prime, this one doesn't have a prime, so let me just use uh, v and u to just differentiate the two to be easier that way. So let me just use m1 u1 to represent initial velocity plus m2 u2 is equals to, so instead of using a prime, I'll just say m1 v1 plus m2 v2. So of course, v will represent final velocity, while u will represent the initial velocity. Now, looking at what we have, the mass for m1 is 40, so we can say 40. The speed for m1, the initial speed is 30 plus the mass for M2 is 80 grams. The speed is zero because it was resting. Then on this part, we can have M1, same thing, 40. V1, we, know, we don't know what V1 is because V1 is the, is the velocity after collision. So it is the final velocity. So we just leave it as V1 as it is, plus 80 V2. We also don't know what V2 is because this is the velocity after collision, okay. So from there, this is what we're going to have. We have 120, which is equals to, this is 0, 40 V1 plus 80 V2. So we can reduce it because if we look at this, we know that 40 can go into 120, can go into 40 as well as 80. So we can say divide throughout by 40. This is just for making the equation more simpler, like that. So that what we'll have will be 40 into 120 is, uh, am I doing the right thing? Supposed to be 1,200 rather. 80 times 40 is supposed to be 1,200. So 40 into 1,200 should be 80. 40, 40 will cancel. Just minus the V1 plus 40 goes into 80 two times. 
though it would prefer you can just go ahead with the, the large numbers though you still come back to the same thing so based on this we can rewrite the equation as v1 plus 2v2 is equals to 30. now let's call this equation one don't forget that v1 and v2 in this case is just representing the final velocities okay so now uh, since the collision is perfectly elastic it means that kinetic energy is conserved when we say kinetic energy is conserved we mean that the kinetic energy before impact is equals to the kinetic energy after impact so in other words we are saying kinetic energy of one plus the kinetic energy of two is equals to the kinetic energy of one that's a prime to represent final plus final kinetic energy for two so now we know that kinetic energy is half mv squared so this will be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared which is equals to same thing half m1 v1 prime squared and lastly we have half m2 v2 prime squared so now to simplify things just like we did for the initial velocity the one which doesn't have a prime i'll just use u for the final velocity i'll use v then it's also important to note that if we multiply this whole equation by two this half will cancel throughout so multiplying the whole equation by two the half will cancel so this is what we remain with here where there's initial velocity i'll just use u hence we'll have m1 u1 squared plus m2 u2 squared is equals to m1 so instead of using a prime i'll just use v1 squared because remember v now represents the final velocity plus m2 v2 squared this half that you see has been cancelled out because we've multiplied the whole equation by a two so the half cancels out throughout so this is what we have so if we make our substitutions here what we're going to have is we know that m1 is 40 so we have 40 our u1 the initial velocity is 30 squared the initial velocity for two was zero because it was at rest so we just keep it as zero mass one we said it's 40 v1 squared plus mass 2 we say it is uh, 80 times v2 squared like that okay so 40 times 30 squared if we multiply yeah, of course 40 times 30 squared 30 squared will give us 900 times 40 should give us something like um, 3600 then here of course this is zero so this is equals to 40 v1 squared plus 80 v2 squared like that okay so just like we did in the previous um for, for when you are creating equation one we can also divide throughout by uh 40 so that we just uh, reduce the equation a bit so this is what will happen if we divide throughout by 40 throughout by 40 throughout by 40 dividing this by 40 should give us 900 is equals to this will just give us v1 squared plus this will give us 2v squared squared like that then rewriting the equation we're going to get v1 squared plus 2v2 squared is equals to 900 like that okay so now this is what we are calling equation two so now remember the question requires us to find the velocity of each ball after collision so using equation one and equation two you just have to solve it simultaneously to find 
the values for v1 as well as v2. So let's combine the two equations now simultaneously. Okay, so before we do that, I've just spotted a small mistake. Here when we multiplied this, we were supposed to get um, 36,000 instead. Then after getting 36,000 and uh, dividing 36,000 by 40 is what gives us the 900. So I hope you're able to see that mistake. So now, from there, as long as we have this equation and this one, everything is okay. Then we can just uh, combine them. So uh, let's do that just now. Okay, so these are the two equations that we formed, equation 1 and equation 2. So to combine them, we shall pick equation 1 and make V1 the subject of the formula by simply saying V1 is equals to 30 minus 2V2, like that. So we've made equation 1 the subject of the formula, so we now push it into equation 2. So that we have, here where there's V1, we substitute with this. So we have, let me just do this. We we'll have open bracket 30 minus 2v2 like that. Then we close our bracket squared plus 2v2 squared is equal to 900. So we have substituted this v1 with this subject of the formula, which has come from equation 1, which is this what we have in red. Then from there now, we need to expand. We need to expand this part so we can say. 30 minus 2v2 multiplied by 30 minus 2v2 plus 2v squared is equal to 900. So 30 times 30, that will give us a 900. 30 times 2v2 should give us 60v2, like that. Then uh, negative 2v2 times 30 should give us a minus 60v2. Uh, negative 2v2 times negative 2v2 should give us a positive 4v2 squared. Plus this, which is 2, like that, is equals to 900. Okay, so now, um, since we are looking for v2 in this case, because we have eliminated uh, v1, we put these two together what we're going to get there will be a 6 v2 squared being equals to so i think this is supposed to be a 60 if i'm not mistaken yes so putting these two together should give us a negative 120 but when it goes to the other side it will become a positive 120 v2 um 900 will go to the other side remember there's another 900 here so we can say we have this 900. If this 900 comes this side to become a minus 900, hence they'll just cancel out. So now what we have is 6v2 squared is equals to 120v2. Then from here, we can say, let's divide both sides by 6. So dividing by 6, dividing by 6. So v2 squared is equals to, this should give us, 20v2. Dividing both sides by v2, so divide by v2, divide by v2, this will cancel. Hence, we just have v2 here being equals to 20 meters per second. So, um, the second object was moving at a speed of uh, 20 meters per second. So, how do we find the speed of the first object? We just come and substitute in our subject of the formula for which we said the subject was v1 is equals to 30 minus 2. So here when we have v2, we shall substitute with a 20. So v1 is equals to 30 minus 40. So v1 is equals to negative 10 meters per second. Okay. So now what does this mean? Remember. We said we had V1, or rather, we had object 1. This is uh, the first ball, which had 40 grams. It moved to this direction to hit another one, which was at rest. This one was 80 grams. So after collision, what happened was 
the first ball moved with a velocity of negative 10. This simply means that after impact, it went in the opposite direction with a speed of 10 meters per second. Why in the opposite direction? Because of the negative sign, so it went to the left. While this one continued to proceed to the right with a speed of uh, with a speed of 20, so this is one for 80. So this one moved to the right with a speed of 20 meters per second. Okay, so that's it. We found the velocities for the two balls. I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much.